We want to speak life over you today. Every person listening, we want you to understand that no matter where you've been or where you might currently find yourself, it's not over. When God is in it, there is no limit. New breed. It's not over. It's not finished. It's not ending. It's only the beginning. It's only the beginning. God is in Hide this creature way beyond your brother's throne. We brought some that friends not along to just to encourage your life and be saved. Lord, your people stand waiting to hear a word of God that will encourage them to run this race another day. Lift us up right now, Lord. Bless us right now, we have you. Bless in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Let the church says you are. You may not see it yet. Scripture this morning was taken from the book of 2 Kings, 20th chapter. I just want to repeat that one more time. It says, In those days, Hezekiah became ill and was at the point of death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, went to him and, and said, This is what the Lord says. Put your house in order because you are going to die. You will not recover. And Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. Anybody ever prayed to the Lord? Remember, Lord, how I walked before your faithful and uh, faithfully and with a wholehearted devotion and had done what is good in your eyes. And Hezekiah bitterly wept before, before Isaiah had left the middle gate. The word of the Lord came to him. Go back and tell Hezekiah, the ruler of my people, this is what the Lord the God of your father, David, says, I have heard, hallelujah, I have heard your prayer and I have seen your tears. I will heal you. And on the third day from now, you will go up to the temple of the Lord and I will add 15 years to your life and I will deliver, I will deliver you in this city from the hand of the Lord, of the King of Assyria. How many of y'all know it's not over? Yeah. Yeah. God. So, so. I just want to preach this morning on just that subject. It's not over until God says it's over. Turn to your neighbor and tell them it's not over. No matter what you're going through, it's not over. The Bible records that there was none, no one like the king Hezekiah. In all the kings of Judah, there was none like Hezekiah. He was known as a good king. The history books record that he did good in the sight of the Lord. And the book of 2 Kings tells us that he clung to the Lord and kept his commandments and, and did what God had called him to do in the kingdom of Judea. His father was King Uzziah and his mother was named Abed. And when his father passed away, he became the king of Judah at the age of 25 years old. And he ruled for 29 years. And when he took over as king, he inherited a mess. Amen. Sounds like President Obama. In the Old Testament, there are eight great revivals. And 
And, 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 and the story of Hezekiah yeah. was a great revival yes, for his kingdom. Yes, for his kingdom was going through a spiritual dryness. Amen. Every king that came before him, except for David and a few others, they all had turned to idolatry. Yeah. They had all given, given up on the Lord and, and forgot about who God was. Yeah. They, they forgot that God brought them out of the land yeah. of Egypt and yeah. out of the house of bondage. They forgot who yeah. God was. They turned to other gods. But Hezekiah, when he took over as the king, mm -hmm. he opened up the churches. Yes. He reinstated the priests yes. and gave them the duties of taking care of the church. Wow. He orchestrated praise and worship, not to idols, but to God. Yeah. All right. Praise God for Hezekiah. Mm -hmm. Amen. As a great king, Hezekiah, the Bible declares that he was sick uh -huh. unto death. Yeah, yeah. Because of his fear of death and sickness, the scripture says that he turned his face yeah. oh my Lord, uh -huh. to the wall. Yeah. It is something to, to tell the doctors to tell you that you're sick. But when your priest or when your pastor or somebody of authority that's been talking to God comes to you and tells you, you are going to die. Get your house in order. You're going to die. This is it. There's no medication. There's nothing else that we can do. This is it. But I declare to you this morning, it's not over. Until God says it's over. I love Hezekiah because it says that when he heard that, he turned his face to the wall and he prayed. How many of y'all know prayer changes things? Changes things. Prayer changes situations. Yeah. Prayer will get people off your back. Prayer yeah. will make a difference in your life. Yeah. I just came out to tell you it's not over yeah. until God yeah. says it's over. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I can't imagine. He prayed, and, and before Isaiah could get to the inner gate, the Lord came to him and said, go back. Oh, uh -huh. uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Prayer. Uh -huh. Go back yeah. and tell him yeah. that I will give him 15 more years. Uh -huh. And then I, I had to go back and, and I had to study. Why 15 more years? Uh -huh. You know, I, I would take a month. I'll take a day. And I started thinking about that thing. And then, then it, it came to me that, that every day that you are alive, yes, sir. every day that you are walking, every day that you open up your eyes, every day that you can move your limbs, every day that you can say, thank you, Jesus, you want to take advantage of it. You should not take nothing for granted. God has been so good to you. And he gave the man 15 more years. 15 more years to shout hallelujah. 15 more years to say thank you Lord for all that you've done. 15 more years. Hallelujah. We, 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 we start to say that the Lord has, has do, is doing it's not doing enough. People sit around and say, well, you know, I, I've been praying and, and I've been waiting and, and nothing has happened. I, I just keep on telling, I want to tell you this morning, it's not over. It's not, it's not finished. It, you got to stay on the battlefield. Amen. Amen. Uh, I, I go to Bible study. I, I come to Sunday school. I, I come to church every once in a while. And, and I just can't understand why this is happening to me. But I, it's not over. We don't have to understand everything that God does. 
We don't have to understand why he does it. Well, all we have to do is understand that God is in control. Yeah. Yeah, let me repeat that. Because some people think that they are in control. Amen. But God is in control. No matter what you're going through, God has the situation well in hand. We learn, we, we, we learn in, in Second Chronicles that, that when Jehoshaphat was in trouble, he turned and he prayed to the Lord. And the Lord delivered him from his enemies. The Lord told him, the battle is not yours. The battle is not yours, but it belongs to me. All you got to do is do what I ask you to do. And everything else is nothing to deal with. You ain't got to worry about it. Amen. It's gravy after that. Amen. When King Uzziah is in trouble, he, he turned to the Lord. God is still, and I, I, I asked this question before, but God, and I want to ask this again, is God still answering prayer? Yeah. 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 He still answers prayer. Yes, and, and I mean, sometimes we got to get you, to the point yeah. of not saying, now lay me down to sleep. No, 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 that won't do sometimes. No, we got to get on our knees and, and, and really talk to God and, and really tell him how bad we really need him in our lives. Sometimes we just got to get into our closet and shut the door, turn off the cell phone and stop worrying about what's going on and talk to God and say, my father would shout in heaven. Some of y'all looking at me like I done lost my mind, but keep living. Amen. Sometimes you just got to pray until something happens. Sometimes you just got to pray over your children until something happens. Sometimes you just got to pray over your spouse. Until something happens. And if you'll be faithful to God, I found out that he'll be faithful to you. Hezekiah yes. was, was true to God. He, he did what God had called him to do. He was a king of kings. He was a man of, of, of God's heart. He loved the Lord. And therefore, I can understand why God gave him another 15 years. And what I like about God is that if he gave him 15, what won't he do for you? He's just that kind of God. Well, Reverend Rennie, he might not give me 15, but take 10 minutes. And if he gives you 10 minutes, praise him all. Minutes of it. Praise him anyhow. Praise him in the courtroom. Praise him in the bed. Praise him in the hospital. Praise him in the nursing home. Praise God for who all. Because I declare unto you, it's not over until God says so. Sometimes I, I go to the hospital and, and I take other ministers with me and, and, and they're standing there saying, Lord, we, we, we love this brother and we, we remember what he did. And now, Lord, you're getting ready to take him. I declare unto you, where there's breath, there's life. And we should not go into the hospital room and declare that it's over. God ain't said it. Don't go telling me what God can't do. I'm going to tell you, even in hospice care, God can move mountains. Don't tell me what God can't do. I've seen him do it. He's just that kind of God. Don't sell him short. Don't, don't take your breath. Don't put the brakes on him. Let him lose. Don't you tell me what God can't do. I don't care if I'm 
in hospitals, don't pull the plug yet. It ain't over until God says it's over. Don't you give up on God. If God is in it, it's not over. You just got to understand something. God don't act and don't work on our time. He don't think like we think. He don't act and do what doctors think that he does. Or that they think that they do. Amen. I was talking to my doctor and he said, I said, well, my blood pressure's not going down. He says, well, I, and I've given you all the medic this medication. And I said, you give me all this stuff. He said, well, that's why we call it practicing. So that let me know right there that, that he was in one situation and I, I had to go talk to my doctor. Amen. If God is in it, it's not over. And I came out to say to you that, that we all have problems that, that we're going through. Amen. But I came to tell you that your problems will not destroy you. But listen to what I'm saying. Your problems are not going to destroy you. Well, wait a minute, preacher. You, you, what you mean? I'm here to tell you, read the story of Job. Amen. Everything that he had was gone. Everything. Amen. His wife had just come in and told him to, to, to curse God and die. But I declare unto you, he did not die. Amen. Amen. And God restored Job. He gave him everything and more. So what's your point? All you got to do is hold on to what God has given you. He might not have given you a mansion in Beverly Hills, but hold on. He might not have given you an escalator, but hold on. He might not have given you a large bank account, but I declare to you, hold on. He might not have a job right now, but I declare, hold on to God's unchanging hand. Keep praying. Have faith. Carry on. Come to church. Praise God. And don't let nobody stop you from praying. get happy in church and everybody wants to fan them and everything. Let them praise God. You don't know what they've been going through. Some of y'all mad because you can't praise them. There ain't nothing wrong with praising God. Shouting hallelujah. You can look at me all you want to, but I know what my God has brought me to. I know how good he's been to me. I know. I know. Don't get mad at me because I'm black.
said it wasn't me. But it had to be somebody. That To death, but it's to the glory of God. Amen. You can practice all you want to, but when He gets through, I'm gonna come forth as pure gold. Hallelujah! Don't give up because it's not over. Whatever you're going through. It's not over yeah. until God yeah. sets us over. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Look, Hezekiah. Yeah, yeah. God told him he was going to give him 15 more years. Yeah. Yeah. Then he had to inquire on the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Are you sure? Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> Listen, let me tell you something. You don't need no proof. Yeah. You proof enough. Yeah. If God said it, that settles it. What you worried about? Amen. One way or another, you're going to live anyhow. Amen. If not here, up there. What you worried about? I don't worry about stuff anymore. I used to sit around and worry and carry and worry and carry and worry and carry, carry stuff and carry stuff and worry and work. And, I, and my wife asked me, what are you worried about? And God before you. Who gonna stand against you? Amen. Let them talk. They talked about Nehemiah. Amen. I'm gonna build it, I'm gonna fix the wall. Oh man, you ain't gonna do nothing. They talked about him. They even talked about Jesus. But I declare unto you, let them talk about you. Let them say whatever they want to say. I just came by to tell you it ain't over. Keep praising God no matter what you're going through. He's just that kind of God. He will see you through. I'm almost through, I'm almost through, I'm almost through. I went, I went to the walk yesterday, cancel walk, and I saw all these people, all these people out there at the park, and they said, it ain't over. I got cancer, but it ain't over. I got, I got some problems, but it ain't over. God ain't through with me yet. Don't you give up. And let me, let me give y'all another scenario. Y'all ain't gonna like this one. Amen. Thursday night. Hallelujah. Thursday night. I was sitting and I was watching a basketball game. And I turned the game off with a minute and eight seconds left because I knew that the Heat were going to lose. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I got on the phone and I started texting my friend. Good luck next year. It ain't about 
about no fat lady singing. But you gotta keep playing the game. You gotta keep walking the walk and talking the talk. Don't let nobody fool you. Don't let nobody tell you that you, you're in church and you shouldn't go up in there. Don't let nobody on your road to ask you, which way you should shop, Listen. And by the same treatment, God is going to do you the same way. So don't come to church with a hypocritical mind. Come to church praising God. Come to church to hear the word of God. And every word that is being preached it may not be for you. Amen. I tell folks that all the time, I, I'm not getting fed. Well, stay a while.